Hershey owns one of the largest factories in the world and is reported to be worth $21 billion as of 2021. Its humble beginnings were led by a 12-year-old dropout who was expected to turn out to be a black sheep like his absent father. Failure, bankruptcy, and debt stood in the way of his chance at success for years. After two failed attempts to open a successful candy shop, left with no money, Hershey approached his uncles for another loan to start up a new business, but instead was turned down, insulted, and kicked out of the house. Newton would leave that day to create the largest chocolate manufacturer in the world, and it all started with a cow. This is the story of how one man became the face of the chocolate industry. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Effie, and if this is your first time here, please don't make it your last by clicking on the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and if you ever feel like chatting, leave your comments below, and also to let me know what you think, and click on the notification bell so you know whenever I post. I have my glass here with me, of course, and today I have juice in here. I have pineapple juice in here from the brand Chiazotic. So yeah, so let's jump right into the story of the real life Willy Wonka, Milton Hershey. I say Willy Wonka. I don't know if we ever watched if we watched the movie Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That was the first time I actually heard about Willy Wonka and the whole candy thing. If you haven't watched the movie, go watch it. It's a nice movie. I watched it as a kid and it's really nice. Um, so it's about a guy who owns a chocolate factory and wants to help poor kids. Oh no, not poor kids kids but anyhow i digress willy wonka is a fictional character but there's a man that comes close to that milton hershey and we're going to talk about him today because trust me you want to know about him milton hershey was born on the 13th of september 1857 in Derry township pennsylvania his parents henry and fanny hershey although from a family of successful entrepreneurs were poor farmers who lived from hand to mouth. Well, mainly due to, to Henry's multiple failed business ventures. So when Milton was two, his father sold the farmhouse, the farmland that they were managing, JJ Liu. He sold it to go chase the oil boom in Pennsylvania. At the time, oil was becoming a necessity in the life of Americans. Those who discovered it were becoming super rich overnight, you know. They were hitting the jackpot and everything. Now, Henry, he recklessly spent the family's money, you know, from selling the properties they had. He recklessly spent the money searching for, digging for gold, and he was unsuccessful at this. And at this time, Fanny, Hershey's mother, was actually heavily pregnant with their second child, and the living conditions were not so good. The situation was not going so they were living in extreme poverty so one day fanny's two brothers came visiting and found their pregnant sister looking lifeless and while she was pregnant you know and her she looking so malnourished and you know he looked a little too small for his age okay the brothers did not like this and they told henry 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 bro mm -mm, not our sister okay Here's what we're going to do. We're going to move you guys back home and give you guys a farmhouse and everything. Okay, because this is ridiculous. But get this. <laughs> Henry still had the guts to go meet Fanny. I was like, yo, tell your brothers to cut me some check. Okay, see, I'm so close to this oil dig, you know. <laughs> Fanny was like, boy, if you don't get... <laughs> I wasn't there. I'm just assuming that would be the appropriate response, you know. You want to kill me in poverty here's help and you're telling them to give him boy pack your things okay so henry reluctantly agreed and the whole family was moved back to lancaster pennsylvania the brother gave them a farm to live like he promised so while they were at this new farm um milton helped his mother to raise chickens they would raise chickens and sell eggs the father henry would um experiment with dams and ra raising fishes in them However, Milton saw that the relationship between his father and his mom wasn't so good, you know. Love is sweet though. When money enters, love is sweet. I'm just saying. So the relationship between Fanny and Harry was not so good. And young Milton could see this. And the whole situation became worse when Henry, again, left the family to fend for themselves in pursuit of another business venture business opportunity so he left his family and was like 
I got dreams to pursue. I'll catch you guys later, okay? Good? He just left. When the winter of 1867 came, the cold was so severe that it became very difficult to keep the Hershey farmhouse warm. Both Milton and his little sister caught a cold and while his mother tried everything to restore their health, his sister worsened until she developed a terrible fever. It was at this point that Fanny realized that her daughter didn't just have a cold. But the scarlet fever, a disease that claimed the lives of thousands of children at the time, and Serena was no exception. At the young age of four, Serena sadly passed away. This tragic event proved to become a turning point for Milton, who at the tender age of 10, promised himself to do whatever it took to create a better life for himself and his mother. So a while later, he dropped out of school and decided to start his journey to, you know, making ash money so this is when he goes to learn a trade in 1871 at the age of 14 milton landed his first job as an apprentice for a local printer in the town his father actually got him a job yeah okay the father actually comes back he comes back a few times so the father gets him this job or the father wanted him to be you know a journalist or something you know that paid very well so milton started working with a local printer called sam ernst ernest sam Ernst, yeah, who was a publisher of a German English newspaper at the time. Milton hated the job. He found the job to be quite, you know, boring. He wasn't really feeling. He wasn't vibing to it. And because he didn't, he found it boring. He didn't put much effort. So he found himself being yelled at a lot by the owner, who had a very short temper. You know, is it short temper or quick temper? Sure, he had a temper. So he was always yelling at him, and this. It was a toxic working environment, you know, HR. But the issue is when the father got him a job, the father actually signed a contract with Sam, the owner of the newspaper, that Milton will work there for like five years. So Milton was contractually, <laughs> I pronounced it, was contractually bound to work for him for five years. So Milton had to hatch a plan to get fired. So he purposely threw his hat into one of the printing machines for it to break down and this threw the owner off. And the owner, Sam, was like, you know what, just get out, leave, just come with your bad head. <laughs> he expired that he got what he wanted and he went home thinking, you know, expecting the family to be upset. But when he got home, surprisingly, his mom 100% supported his decision to quit the job and she saw that the printing job was totally all her husband's idea for um young milton so she came together with her sister maddie and got milton another job at the lancaster confectionery owned by joseph royer it was here that milton would get his first taste at the candy business candies at the time were created by experimentations and these recipes were passed down from generations to generations. Recipes were very vague and many of them were not even written down and had to be reproduced by memory. Like, you had to have strong memory to work in the candy industry, man. So as a result of this, how complex it was, the owner did not trust young Milton to, you know, be able to fall into the manufacturing side of it. And instead assigned him to like wash dishes and take orders at the counter and also delivery, like delivering their sweets and ice creams to the homes of customers. Milton's mother Fanny knew that this wasn't a good fit for her son because in order for Milton to become successful, he had to learn how to make the most sustainable and long-lasting product that the shop had to offer, which were candies. So she went to meet the owner and was like, do. My son can, be, I need you to excuse my son from all those other menial jobs and teach him how to make candy. I'll pay you even. Yeah. Fanny's mom paid the owner of the candy shop to teach Milton how to make candies. And you know, the cha-ching, the money part motivated the owner to be like, okay, you know what? I'll give him a chance, you know. Give him my money, but you know, I'll give your son a chance. Milton was so excited that the mom could pull this through and 
just as he started he discovered his knack for experimenting and making sweets and later learned how and where to buy ingredients as well as pricing of the sweets he became familiar with a wide range of sweets like caramel fudge and peppermint and his father henry totally disapproved of this he would always say that making candy was a woman's job but Milton paid no attention to his words. He was headset on what he wanted and he went for it. So again, Henry, Milton's father, surprise, surprise, left the family again to Chicago in pursuit of another business venture. You know, this guy, this guy. Milton spent four years working with Mr. Royers, learning the ins and outs of the business. And after gaining confidence in his knowledge and expertise, he and his mother agreed that it was time to open his own shop. The only problem was the, all the money Milton had managed to save over the years wasn't enough to open a confectionery shop. But luckily, his aunties and uncles had his back and loaned him $100, which was enough to open his first store. With his family's support, Henry was ready to open his first store at the age of 19. However, it wasn't going to be easy. In 1876, America was set to hold its first world fair in the city of Philadelphia, which was about 70 miles away from where Milton lived. With news of 37 countries participating and attendance projected to be in the millions, Milton decided to open his first confectionery shop at the Philadelphia Spring Garden Street. Their meeting offered a wild variety of cakes, sweets, ice creams, fruits, and um, nuts. Although there were many candy stores around the corner, but Milton's store just stood out to people. One smart thing he did differently was create um, an air chute where he would put his candy and that would like send the smell or the aroma of the sweets into the street and that would pull people you know that's great that was a that's a great strategy okay so that was how he attracted more people as his business began to flourish milton had to rent a bigger space for his shop but things took a drastic turn when the world fair ended and the whole nation fell into a depression leaving his sales to plummet milton managed to stay afloat by selling his candies at wholesale to other candy shops but then another problem will come his way again. Sugar became too expensive and Milton's shop was now struggling to make a profit. But as his business continued to lose money, Milton had to get some loans from his uncles again. And for the next five years, Hershey works himself so hard that he eventually became ill and bedridden. One day he got a letter from his uncles saying that they won't be loaning him more money and advised him to close his shop and salvage whatever he could. Milton, who was 21 at the time, had no other choice than to file for bankruptcy. He had not only lost his business, he had also lost his um, family's faith for him. And this just broke um, Milton. It would break anybody. But Milton didn't give up and he realized that all he had to do was start all over again. In 1881, Milton's father, Henry, found out about the silver rush in Landville, Colorado and asked Milton to come meet him there and Milton figured he had nothing to lose and decided to go join his father but when he got there he realized that the silver they had come for was mostly you know was mostly gone it was too late it came late to the party so he ignored his father and was like I'm out can't deal with this and got a job at a candy shop in um, Denver the store specialized in caramel but instead of using paraffin, as Milton was used to, instead, the owner used fresh milk, vanilla, and sugar. The result was a sweet, smooth, and soft caramel with a longer shelf life. Hershey was so impressed by this technique that he stayed at the shop and worked for a year until he had perfected and memorized the um, recipe to this new way of making caramel. Once he was ready to move on, he decided that he was going to open a shop at the most competitive city in America, the Big Apple, New York. He went back to his uncles hoping for another loan, but to his dismay, they rejected him and wanted no parts of his endeavors. They were like, no, we ain't giving you no more money. But however, 
his auntie took a bet on him and loaned him the money to open a new shop. Upon arriving in New York City, he wasted no time in finding a job. He started working at the Hyler's candy shop who ran two successful stores in town. And when he got information about local supplies and got a taste of the city, he opened his second shop in 1884 and set himself apart by offering his Denver-style caramels. His business was successful as New Yorkers seemed to be hooked on this new, this new thing in town, this new caramel. Caramel. <laughs> this new caramel in town. As sales began to improve, it was later persuaded by his father, again, to include cough drops into his shop. But his decisions to sell cough drops meant that he was um, challenging an already established brand, known brand in the city, Smith Brothers Cough Drops, which were loved by New Yorkers and they didn't take the challenge lightly. During the next couple of years, Milton's business began to struggle again. He started accumulating more debt until eventually filing for bankruptcy in 1886. Once again, Milton had failed. But however, he didn't lose hope because he knew what he needed to do. This time, he would focus on one thing, caramels. Returning back home to Lancaster wasn't easy for Hershey. Still, he summoned the courage after a few weeks and went back to his uncles and aunties for, you know, more loans. Had to gather himself. What's the worst that will happen? He told them about his new caramel recipe and that uh, and um, his chances of succeeding this time because he could source um, the ingredients at home. But his uncles were totally done with Hershey and they told him he was no different from his father and that he has become the black sheep of the family. With nowhere else to go, Milton turned to his former accountant, William Liebkeker who loaned him enough money to help get back on his feet and start a new business. Using the leftover um, supplies from his New York shop, he started to make caramels again and um, started selling them with a hand basket. Like he would go around with a basket and sell it and market it to people by himself. He was basically hawking his product. Hawk your shit. So he was hawking on the streets of um, Lancaster Using fresh milk, all the tricks he had learned along the way, he was able to create the perfect caramel that customers loved. He later established the Lancaster Caramel Company and has his um, sales began to grow. Milton reinvested the money in getting um, a push cart and then graduated to getting a new um, a new space, a small production um, place. Although Milton's auntie had refused him for another loan. She later changed her mind when she saw the um, little growth in, and the effort Milton was putting into the business and loaned Milton another $700 to buy equipment. But this time there was a catch. He had to pay her back the money within 90 days. As time passed, Hershey's um, business wasn't really going as planned. He was far away from repaying the money his auntie had given him and he had just like 90 days to do that. As he started to question himself again on what he was going to do, like what the next step was going to be, a British exporter found his caramel and was really impressed by the unique taste the caramels had. And when he learned about the long shelf life of this caramel, he immediately placed a huge order and promised that he was going to pay Milton as soon as the orders landed in London in good condition. Now, Milton had another problem. He didn't even have the capital to produce these products in the first place, not to talk of shipping them. So he, he went back to the bank and even though he already had this debt of $700 hanging over his head, he went to the bank and asked them for another $1,000 you know, to produce this Caramel. Initially, the um, officer had rejected his request, but upon looking further, he was impressed by Milton's cart and uh, the unique taste of his caramel and the effort Milton was actually putting into the business. Knowing that the bank would not give Milton this money, the officer himself used his name to get the loan and um, 
gave it to Milton. He just believed there was something about Milton that the officer just believed. Immediately after, Hershey hired more hands in order for him to produce and meet up with the order by the British importer or exporter. Importer export. And he was able to ship the caramels out the following week. After a few days, Milton still didn't hear anything from the British um, importer and he was getting very weary and restless and very impatient because he knew if this falls through, if this doesn't work out, he's screwed again and he has failed again. He's going to file for bankruptcy and you know, so many things. They already think he's the black sheep of the family. So imagine failing again. They'll be like, you know, I told you so and all of that. So he really had a lot of pressure on him at this um, period he was waiting. A few days to when the time had elapsed for the loan, Milton got a letter and inside was a check for 500 British pounds, which would amount to about $65,000 right now. Cha-ching! Milton was overwhelmed and finally he was able to pay off all of his debts and his worries were over. From there, sales of his proprietary caramels, Hershey's Crystal A, took off. And most of his sales came from Europe at the time. He slowly began to expand in the US too. And by 1894, Milton's business had grown into silver factories with thousands of workers and was bringing over a million dollars in sales. He became one of the richest and most respected men in all of Lancaster. With a strong team in place taking over the whole production, Milton was now in his 30s. By this time, he had more time on his hand and he grew restless. On one occasion, he visited the Colombian Exposition in um, Chicago to check out the world's newest invention. Unbeknownst to Milton, this trip will forever change his life. During his visit to the exposition, Hershey witnessed J.M. Lehman's chocolate rolling machinery from Germany. At the time, chocolate was a luxury most people couldn't afford. Like, chocolate was for the rich and bougie, okay? You couldn't have chocolate if you didn't have money. But Lehman's demonstration proved that chocolate could be mass produced and therefore making it more available to more people because it could be produced at a cheaper rate. Sensing an opportunity, Hershey offers to buy Lehman's whole setup, which Lehman gladly accepted. Now, immediately after Milton returned to Lancaster, Hershey began experimenting with producing sweet chocolates and other cocoa products, and soon incorporated the Hershey Chocolate Factory as a subsidiary of his um, caramel business. Using his old formulas of fresh milk, as he had learned with the caramel, over the years, Milton added different varieties of sweets until he it amounted to about 100 different varieties of different kinds of sweets. However, I started noticing that um, the sales of chocolate was beginning to spread in Europe, but was, however, eating into his um, caramel business shares. At that point, Hershey believed that the caramel business had peaked and was fast becoming a thing of the past. And at this point was when Milton was about to make the most risky business decision of his life. He was going to sell his caramel business and solely devote his time to chocolate. In 1900, he sold his business to another competitor for the sum of $1 million and cha-ching! He immediately after started the construction of his new factories. And it was a massive factory with high-tech machineries for his new company. As construction of his new factory began, Hershey instructed some of his most trusted employees to go work for his competitors, you know, get intel, sneak around, so they might learn their techniques. And most of them had to travel out, you know, to try, like they spread out, they really spread out. But although this was, this proved to be very unsuccessful, but Milton couldn't bother his head with that, you know. In early 900, political corruption was increasing in the area. There was political tension, so Milton made the decision to move away. He made the difficult decision to leave his business town. He bought over 1,200 acres of empty farmland 
in Derry Church and began developing a whole new town from the ground up for himself and his workers. But as the walls of his six acre factory began to rise by the end of 1903, Hershey and his men still didn't know how to mass produce and um, preserve chocolate which at the time only the Swedes had mastered this but they kept it a secret but unbeknownst to Milton the answer was right beside him the whole time in Lancaster Hershey hired a previous employee from his caramel business in Lancaster Johnny Schmobach who at his very first attempt found a way to warm and condense the milk without burning it creating a mild tasting milk chocolate that tasted sweet but with a subtle sour note but not only that the process of using condensed milk instead of powdered milk helped to increase the shelf life of the product meaning it could be mass produced and less expensive little did johnny know that he has just laid down the formula for which the hershey corporation would be based on Although Milton had been selling his chocolate bars since the 1900s, he could finally mass produce them at a lower price, 5 cents each, which now made them very affordable to the masses. You get a chocolate, you get a chocolate, you get a chocolate for 5 cents. By 1906, Hershey was in every supermarket and was grossing over a million dollars in sales. Entering the next two years, Hershey would pop out two more products that are still synonymous with the companies today. Hershey's Kisses and Hershey's Chocolate Bars with Almonds. These two signature candies and Milton's original bar drove the company to heights that was beyond Milton's wildest imaginations and making millions along the way. And his factory actually tripled in size, becoming the largest factory in the world. He made it, he made it. And as his sales grew in a blistering rate, his town grew along with it. The town of Hershey grew to include modern homes with electricity, schools, hospitals, churches, and many other entertainment sites, such as a zoo and an open air theater. I mean, what else do you want? What else do you need outside the town? But since Hershey and his wife could not have children of their own, they established a school. Hershey Industrial School in 1909, which specialized in taking care of orphan boys from the age of 4 to 18. And in later years, Milton would even transfer majority of his shares from the Milton Hershey Company to the Milton Hershey School, as it is being called today. So right now, the school controls 40% of the Hershey, you know, company, making it one of the wealthiest private schools in the U.S. But however, as this um, company and businesses started to do well and began to rise, his wife's health worsened. He had already lost his father and Auntie Mavi right before his business actually took off. And he had grown closer to his mom and his wife. And despite having this enormous wealth, and any kind of doctors within his like he could get any doctor he wanted but sadly it wasn't enough to save his wife and in 1915 his wife Catherine died of pneumonia like it's just so messed up you know after her passing Hershey couldn't bear to stay at home so he just threw himself into his work and just you know doubled down on his work eventually he decided to take the much needed vacation and he traveled to cuba there he immediately fell in love with the people and the community and he later found out about the abundant sugar the country possessed it was here that hershey discovered his next goal he was going to build a sugar mill in cuba and in doing so he built another community like the little town he built in Derry church back in the u.s with that in mind, Hershey built the most advanced sugar mill along with modern houses, school, and health clinics for his new workers. He's just such a great guy, you know? I'd like to work for him, you know? I'd like to work for someone like Hershey who just takes care of his own workers, you know? Because when your workers feel good, you get you feel good or something. Now, by doing so, Hershey had the benefit of importing 
um, milk from dairy church and also had the advantage of exporting sugar back to the united states at a very affordable price it was just it was a win-win situation you know when the first world war broke out in 1914 sugar suddenly became scarce suddenly became scarce scarce and very expensive and while other companies were struggling Hershey managed to survive the war by using his own resources, you know, the sugar, milk. You know, he was his own supplier because he had gone to the source. And he even made a huge contract with the United States to supply a huge amount of cocoa and chocolate bars for their soldiers, expanding the Hershey brand around the world. By the end of the war, Hershey's chocolates surpassed $20 million. Dollars annual sales but shortly after Milton experienced another tragedy his loving mother Fanny Hershey passed away in 1920 and this was a very difficult time for Hershey because like come on everyone who supported and really loved him was gone the auntie the dad and now his mom I guess he still had his uncle but I don't know how the relationship um, after they didn't help him anymore, I don't know how the relationship was. I don't think they were bad people, but, you know. This was a very tough time for Milton because apart from losing his mom, he was also facing very fierce competition like never before. As Milton saw how other chocolate brands picked up market shares by spending heavily on ads, his sales continued to soar as they reached an astonishing amount of $41 million dollars. By 1929, back then, these are the real big boards. Hershey continued to run the company until 1944, and he retired as the CEO at the age of 87. He really lived a long life. Milton died a year later, so at the age of 88, in his hometown, Hershey, Pennsylvania. Following his death, the Milton Hershey Company continued to grow and remains one of the largest chocolate manufacturers in the world with a market cap of over $44 billion. So we've come to the end of this story and it's just a story of resilience and finally making Imagine a poor farm boy who was doomed to fail like all the odds were against him, but luckily for his extended family that helped. But still, you know, at some point, you know, some people, they just do, you just stop, you do, you just stop. You do. He just showed that, okay, you do, you fail, Failing is important in success, in my opinion. I feel you only fail when you stop. As long as you keep going, you haven't failed yet. If you have a dream, there's a reason you have that dream. It's because you're capable of it. So you just keep pushing. So Milton Hershey today takes care of thousands of children in Pennsylvania. Like they are well taken care of. The quality of education this man left for kids it's one that people pay millions and thousands of dollars for and he made it available for kids for free i want to say he's he was a really great man a man with a really 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 good heart like he left a lot of money for this for children he left a really really good um um proof that he lived you know legacy that's the word i'm looking for <laughs> he left a really really good legacy so yeah we'll come to the end let me know what you think about the story let me know if you've heard about the hershey candy i've not tasted the hershey candy i'll do that soon soon very soon and yeah so that's the story of a great man called milton hershey the face of the chocolate industry and a real life Willy wonka thank you guys for watching remember to subscribe like and leave your comments below again i'm fa and thank you for watching Bye, guys.